Well, thank you very much. I just want to say that the First Lady and myself, we just came back from an incredible experience at the Pentagon. It was an incredible, really a beautiful ceremony. And uh, I was very honored, and I think I can definitely speak for the First Lady, to have partaken in a ceremony that was just so, so lovely, representing uh, September 11th, 3,000 lives. And if you think about it, that number really got, as you know, Alex, it got a lot higher than that indirectly. Directly and indirectly, a lot of people, a lot of great people. So that was a tremendous job everybody did this morning, letting the world know uh, that we're ready for anything. If we have to be, we're ready for anything. So uh, thank you, and I know a lot of you were there, and I appreciate you being there very much. We have a problem in our country. It's a new problem. It's a problem that nobody really thought about too much uh, a few years ago, and it's called vaping, especially vaping as it pertains to innocent children. And they're coming home, and they're saying, Mom, I want to vape. And the parents don't know too much about it, and nobody knows too much about it, but they do know it's causing a lot of problems. And we're going to have to do something about it. One of the words and one of the reasons we're meeting today is to let you know that it's out there. And we want to have parents understand that we're studying it very carefully. It's, again, very new and potentially very bad. There have been deaths, and there have been a lot of other problems. People think it's an easy solution to cigarettes, but it's turned out that it has its own difficulties. So I'm going to ask Secretary Azar to say a few words, and then, uh, if I could, Acting Director of the FDA, Sharpless, and you've been doing a fantastic job. I want to thank you. And we want to discuss the situation, uh, because uh, not only is it a problem overall, but really specifically with respect to children, we're getting some stories that we don't want to hear, and we may very well have to do something very, very strong about it. So if I could ask you, uh, Mr. Secretary, say a few words. Thank you, Mr. President. So we briefed the President and First Lady today on as yet undisclosed new data that we have from the National Youth Tobacco Survey. This information shows a continued surging in adolescent usage of e-cigarettes. It also shows that the youth are drawn to flavored e-cigarettes, including mint and menthol. Currently, about 8 million adults use e-cigarettes, but 5 million children are using e-cigarettes. This is exceptionally harmful to our children. An entire generation of children risk becoming addicted to nicotine because of the attractiveness, appealability, and availability of these vaping products. So with the President's support, the Food and Drug Administration intends to finalize a guidance document that would commence enforcement to require that all flavors other than tobacco flavor, would be removed from the market. This would include mint and menthol flavoring, as well as candy flavors, bubblegum flavor, fruit flavor, alcohol flavor. You get the drift. So once the FDA would finalize this guidance, we would begin enforcement actions to remove all such products from the marketplace. We would le allow tobacco flavoring to remain subject to their filing, the manufacturers of the tobacco flavored e-cigarette products filing for pre-market tobacco approval with the Food and Drug Administration to assure that the availability of their product is consistent with the public health under the standards set by the Tobacco Control Act. Any of the other products which would be removed from the market would be able to apply under the similar regulatory pathway for approval, but have to meet that standard. 
But I want to caution that with the President's support, while we would allow the tobacco flavored e-cigarettes to remain on the market, to be available for adults who are seeking to stop the use of combustible tobacco, if we find that children are being attracted to tobacco flavored e-cigarettes, if we find that manufacturers are marketing the tobacco flavored e-cigarettes to children or placing them in settings where they get them, we will take enforcement action there also. Let me turn it over to Dr. Ned Sharpless, the Acting Commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration, for any additional details or comments that you have. Thank you, thank you Secretary. Uh, the, the data uh, gathered by the CDC and the FDA are as the Secretary described. It shows a very concerning and alarming uh, trend of use by children of uh, flavored e-cigarette products. Uh, the President is directing the FDA uh, to take uh, decisive action against this problem and to finalize our plans that we have been working on. This would have the effect, as the Secretary mentioned, of severely curtailing access to flavored e-cigarette products, which we believe dr drive childhood use and uh, will help us get a handle on this alarming and concerning trend. And I will say that Commissioner Sharpless has been working on this very hard, but he's now going to double and triple up. We're looking at very strong rules and regulations. We already have laws as we need them. But we want to get to the bottom of a very unusual situation. It's so new, and it's become so big, so fast, and it could be a potential very severe problem. So, uh, Commissioner, you know what to do. You know yes, what sir. to do. And it's, uh, it's something that, frankly, should have been looked into a few years ago in a uh, much more advanced way. It wasn't. And we have something that will be very interesting to see what turns up. But you'll be able to report back in the fairly near future, because you've done a lot of work on this, and we'll see what happens. Okay? Yes, sir. The FDA is on it. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions on this, please? Mr. President, yeah. is the Taliban, excuse me, is the Taliban talks completely dead still, or is there still a, a possibility? The talks with the Taliban are dead. Jeff? Um, a follow-up on your uh, decision yesterday with regard <coughs> to Mr. Bolton. What led you to decide to part ways? So, John is somebody that I actually got along with very well. He made some very big mistakes. When he talked about the Libyan model for Kim Jong-un, that was not a good statement to make. If you just take a look at what happened with Gaddafi. That was not a good statement to make. And it set us back. And frankly, uh, he wanted to do things not necessarily tougher than me. You know, John's known as a tough guy. He's so tough, he got us into Iraq. That's tough. And uh, But he's uh, somebody that I actually had a very good relationship with. But he wasn't getting along with people in the administration that I consider very important. And uh, I hope we, we've left in good stead. But maybe we have and maybe we haven't. I have to run the country the way we're running the country. We're doing very well. We're respected all over the world again. Uh, respected like we haven't been respected in many, many years. You look at Iran and you look at uh, so many of the things that are happening. Iran wants to talk. They all want to talk. We're doing very well with China. And uh, you probably saw the numbers that have come out and come out. Some of them coming out just today. But China's the air supply chain, chain is breaking up. The supply chain of China, which was this unbreakable, powerful tool that they had, is breaking up like a toy because companies are moving out. And China wants to make a deal. We'll see what happens. We have to make the right deal for this country. China's been taking out hundreds of billions of dollars a year out of our country. And, you know, I read, uh, I read papers like the Wall Street Journal. They don't have a clue. They haven't got a clue. Uh, they don't make any excuses for the fact that China has been literally ripping off the United States in the worst manner for so many years. $500 billion pouring out of the United States. And I, I hear People, I don't even know, do these people have any education on anything? It's common sense, maybe, more than anything else. But I look at some statements that are made uh, from so many different people. And, you know, John wasn't in line with what we were doing. And actually, in some cases, he thought it was too tough what we were doing. 
Mr. Tough Guy, you know, you have to go into Iraq. Going into Iraq was something that he felt very strongly about. So we're right now in for over $7 trillion into the Middle East. And I don't say it was his decision. You had a president and you had other people also, but he was very out there, I can tell you, and uh, wanting to have them do it. And I disagreed with that decision from the beginning, even though I was a civilian, so nobody cared. But I was out there. I was uh, outspoken about it. I thought it was a terrible mistake. Here we are many, many years later, decades later, and we're still there. And we've been acting as policemen. And I'll tell you one thing. Uh, we are hitting the Taliban right now harder than they've ever been hit. And what they did was horrible. When they killed a great American soldier, when they killed 12 people, innocent people, essentially innocent people, because if you look, I mean, many of these people were civilians. You also had a NATO soldier, in addition to our great soldier. But when they did what they did in order to create what they thought was a better negotiating stance, I said, that's the end of them. Get them out. I don't want anything to do with them. And they've been hit very hard. And I know for a fact, they said that was a big mistake that they made, and it was. But uh, that was my decision. And what we're doing now is my decision. So we have a lot of great people that want that position. A lot of great people want a lot of positions. They want to be a part of this administration. We've done more in this administration in less than three years than, I believe, any president. You look at the accomplishments. Even today, what we're doing. You look at what we're doing today. These are big things. Nobody else would be doing this. They're big things. But we've done more than any administration probably in the history of the country. You just look at one point after another point, whether it's regulation cuts, whether it's tax cuts. You look at right to try with these two gentlemen, so important, right to try, where people are able to use uh, some of the incredible innovations that we've developed with the greatest labs and the greatest doctors in the world, and they can use them instead of being forced to move to and leave to other countries that don't have a clue compared to us. And now they have right to try. And by the way, a lot of people are being saved. A lot of great things are happening with right to try. But what we've done for the vets, what we've done for our great uh, military, with spending 700 this year, $718 billion. And by the way, that's also jobs. Secondarily, but it's also jobs. Nobody's done what we've done. And uh, we're very honored to have done it. We're in a very good footing. Our country is respected again. Who are your yes. top? Who are your top? Who are your top picks for for to replace? Well, I have five people that uh, want it very much. I mean, a lot more than that would like to have it, but there are five people that I consider very highly qualified, good people I've gotten to know uh, over the last three years, and uh, we'll be announcing somebody next week. But we have some very highly qualified people. But we were set back very badly when. John Bolton talked about the Libyan model, and he made a mistake. And as soon as he mentioned that, the Libyan model, what a disaster. Take a look at what happened to Gaddafi with the Libyan model. And he's using that to make a deal with North Korea. And I don't blame Kim Jong-un for what he said after that. And he wanted nothing to do with John Bolton. And that's not a question of being tough. That's a question of being not smart to say something like that. So I wish John the best. We actually got along very well. I'm sure he'll, you know, do whatever he can do to, uh, you know, what, spin it his way. Uh, John came to see me the night before. In fact, I think a lot of you people are out there waiting for me to get on the helicopter. I'm sure you have a shot somewhere along the line. And he sat right in that chair. And I told him, John, you have too many people. You're not getting along with people. And a lot of us, including me, disagree with some of your tactics and some of your ideas. And I wish you well, but I'd like you to submit your resignation. And he did that. And I really — I know he's going to do well. I hope he's going to do well. And I wish him well. So I just spoke with Senator Toomey and Senator Murphy and Joe Manchin, Senator Joe Manchin. Just had a long talk with them just before this meeting, just hung up. And we are working very, very hard together, all of us, so we're seeing if we can come up with something that's acceptable to everybody. It's a subject that's been going on for decades. Decades they've been talking about it. 
So we're looking at background checks, and we're looking at uh, putting everything together in a unified way so that we can have something that's meaningful. At the same time, all of us want to protect our great Second Amendment. It's very important to all of us. Uh, so we are now in meetings. The meetings are going to go on tonight. I'm going to speak with them again tomorrow. And I think progress is being made. I hope so. Are you willing to put background checks on all private gun sales? We're going to take a look at a lot of different things, and we'll be reporting back in a fairly short period of time. Uh, there are a lot of things under discussion. Some things will never happen, and some things can really very much — some very meaningful things can happen. It's really a gun sense, if you think about it. What we're looking at is — and maybe that's what we should call it — the gun sense bill. But uh, we will have some — we're having great dialogue. We'll see what happens. And did you tell your chief of staff to have no disavow those forecasters who said that Alabama was not? No, I never did that. I never did that. That's a whole hoax by the — fake news media when they talk about the hurricane and when they talk about Florida and they talk about Alabama. That's a, just fake news. It was right from the beginning. It was a fake story. And uh, while we're here and while we're talking about that, I want to congratulate Dan Bishop last night on an incredible win. He was — Dan was 17 points behind three weeks ago. The, the media thought he was going to lose. They were all set to have a — a big celebration with their partners from the Democrat Party. And uh, Dan Bishop worked really hard, and I worked very hard with him. And he made up a 17-point lead in a few weeks. And he won a great election last night. And also Greg Murphy, which nobody's even reporting, but Greg Murphy won a great congressional election in North Carolina last night. And I want to congratulate between Dan and Greg. What a job they did. We pick up two seats. and. Uh, Greg was, you know, anticipated to win by two or three points, maybe less, but two or three points. And he won by many, many points. I don't know what the final tab is, but he won by a lot. And he campaigned brilliantly, and Dan campaigned brilliantly. And uh, so we're very happy about that. That's a tremendous win for the Republican Party. Okay? Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Yeah, go ahead. Now that, now that John Bolton is gone, is your policy on Venezuela going to change? Are you open to meeting with Well, Maduro? we have a policy on Venezuela that's a firm policy. Uh, Venezuela is really hurting, and we're trying to help people in a humanitarian way. Uh, that's probably not good in terms of, you know, crushing a, a, a terrible regime. But, yeah, people dying. This is a country that 15 years ago was one of the wealthiest countries. And now it's dying. They don't have water. They don't have food. They don't have medical. They have nothing. So we're trying to help as, as much as we can. We're also working with Colombia. And he's — the leader of Colombia is a friend of mine, and he's doing a really good job. I can tell you that. We're working with Colombia. We're working with Brazil. We're working with other countries on a humanitarian basis. Uh, Venezuela is in very sad shape. That shows you about socialism. I mean, that shows you what happens. You take a country that was so wealthy 15 years ago, and today they don't have water and they don't have basic food. So we'll see what happens. No, I disagreed with John Bolton on his attitudes on Venezuela. I thought he was way out of line, and I think I've proven to be right. But we are uh, always watching Venezuela very, very closely. And would you be open to meeting with Maduro? I don't want to count. I don't want to talk about that. Mr. President, about your announcement today, are you concerned that the companies that were making these products will, will be treated unfairly by taking these, market, these products off the market? Well, they've become very rich companies very fast. And the whole thing with vaping is uh, is a uh, been very profitable. And I want companies. Look, you know that. I fight for our companies very hard. I fight — that's why I'm fighting with China. That's why I'm fighting with other — countries, if you look at European Union, and if you look at uh, Japan, and if you look at so many others, including South Korea and many others, we're constantly dealing with them to make it good for our companies, because I view it as jobs. I view it as income for our country and jobs. Uh, vaping has become a very big business, as I understand it, like a giant business in a very short period of time. But we can't allow people to get sick, and we can't have our youth be so affected. And I'm hearing it. And that's how the First Lady got involved. And she's got a son together that is a, a 
beautiful young man, and she feels very, very strongly about it. She's seen it. We're both reading it. A lot of people are reading it. But people are dying with vaping. So we're looking at it very closely. And, you know, if nothing else, this is a conference that's going to let people know about it, because people are going to watch what we're saying. And parents are going to be a lot tougher with respect to their children. A lot of people think vaping is wonderful, it's great. It's, it's really not wonderful. It's, uh, that's one thing I think we can say definitely, Commissioner. It's not a wonderful thing. It's uh, got big problems. We have to find out the extent of the problem. It's so new. It's so new. But we're going to find out. And I hope that parents that, uh, you know, they have children and the children are a certain age, I hope they're going to be able to uh, make wise decisions, maybe based on what we're saying today. But the Commissioner and Alex Azar, they're going to be coming back over the next pretty short period of time, a couple of weeks, with some very strong uh, recommendations. Can you tell us what the timeline is for taking those flavors off the market? So Alex? Yes. So it, it'll take uh, several weeks for us to put out the final guidance that would announce the, all the parameters around the enforcement policy. And then it will likely be about a 30 day delay effective date, as is customary with FDA's good guidance practices. And at that point, all flavored e cigarettes, other than tobacco flavors, would have to be removed from the market. Tobacco flavored uh, e cigarettes, their, their manufacturers would by May 2020 have to file for approval by FDA of their products. The other flavored product manufacturers can at any time also file, but they would be off the market until approved by FDA. The Obama administration had allowed these products to go onto the market in an unregulated way by delaying any enforcement uh, in the hopes that people who are consumed using combustible tobacco would transition to a less harmful form of nicotine cigarettes. But what we've seen is the data just shows the kids are getting access to these products in spite of our best efforts at enforcement, at retail enforcement, at controlling locations, at over 8,000 warning letters to retailers and others, in spite of moving products off shelves. Um, they've been going at it, so we simply have to remove these attractive flavored products from the marketplace until they secure FDA approval if they can. Mr. President, are you looking at a meeting with the Iranian President Rouhani at UNGA? I'm not looking at anything. Uh, Iran is a different country than it was two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago, they were given a lot of money by President Obama previous to that, $150 billion, $1.8 billion in cash, in actual cash. It's very impressive. Uh, but they are a much different country right now than they were two and a half years ago when I came into office. And I do believe they'd like to make a deal. If they do, that's great. And if they don't, that's great, too. But they have tremendous financial difficulty, and uh, the sanctions are getting tougher and tougher. We cannot let Iran have a nuclear weapon, and they never will have a nuclear weapon. And if they're thinking about enrichment, they can forget about it, because it's going to be very, it's going to be very dangerous for them to enrich. Very, very dangerous, okay? So you can, you can, you can spread the word to Iran. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I think Iran has potential, and I think North Korea. Those are two countries we're dealing with right now at a very high level. And I think Iran has a tremendous, tremendous potential. Uh, they're incredible people. Uh, they ha we're not looking for regime change. Uh, we hope that we can make a deal. And if we can't make a deal, that's fine, too. Okay? That's fine, too. But I think they have to make a deal. They've never been in this condition. By the way, China is having the worst year they've had now in 57 years, okay? 57. It was 27, it was 22, and then 27. It's 57 years is the worst year they've had. And uh, it's only going to get worse. So I think they want to make a deal, too. We're dealing with them, but I think they want to make a deal. As you know, they're coming in sometime in early October, and we're speaking to them constantly. Uh, and they also uh, — they made a couple of moves last night that were pretty good. You saw that, right? They were pretty good. Which moves? You mean? They were pretty respectful to our people. You're going to see it because you were one of the people that reported it, your, your group. But uh, China is um, — China is about having to do with tariffs, Jeff. Having to do — you saw what they did. They took tariffs off certain things, a lot of things. And you're happy about that?
Wow. I think they did the right thing. I think it was good for them. But they took them off. Yeah, I think it was a, a I think it was a gesture. Okay? But it was a big move. People were shocked. I wasn't shocked. But I deal with them, and I, I know them, and I like them, and I hope we can do something. And uh, with respect to Iran, I think they have to do something, because they have potential to have an unbelievably great country. But the way it's going right now, it's disintegrating. And I don't think — I don't think they should allow that to happen. North Korea has tremendous potential. North Korea is in between Russia, China, and South Korea. It's an incredible — incredible people. I think that they really will uh, — they have — they have this truly unbelievable potential. And I think they want to get to it. We'll see what happens. I mean, maybe they do and maybe they don't — won't. I mean, you're just going to just see. But I really believe that North Korea would like to see something uh, tremendous happen. This could be one of the most unbelievable uh, — uh, you look at a country in terms of upside. This could be one of the most unbelievable experiments ever, North Korea. And I, I also say the same with Iran. Iran can get back to business. They can do unbelievably well with all of the natural things that they have. So on vaping, just to finish, this is all about vaping. This is a meeting that gets off a little track because you ask us questions about other things, and I think we're better off ask, answering them than not. But uh, we are — looking at vaping very strongly. It's very dangerous. Uh, children have died. People have died. And the acting commissioner is uh, is somebody that's a true expert on it, as much as you can be an expert on a brand-new subject. And we're going to have some very strong rules, regulations. And more importantly, I think we're going to have some very important information come out very shortly, okay? And we'll be reporting that over the next couple of weeks. And I want to thank you and Commissioner. I want to thank you very much. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Thanks, everybody. Thank you, President.